It's easy to look at an abandoned stadium and say that it was a mistake. The rotting carcass of glory days gone by, the echoes long silenced and replaced with weeds and decay. As it sits in Akron, Ohio, this stadium represents a bygone era. Once the site of college games, NFL games, and epic concerts, the Rubber Bowl lives on both in a state of rot and in many people's fond memories. But let's find out what exactly went wrong. This is the story of the stadium that will not bounce back. Have you ever met anyone on earth who doesn't like more money? Spoiler alert, it's you. You like having more money. So if you buy gas, groceries, or dine out, with the Upside app, you can earn cash back starting today. Again, talking to you. At first, I was skeptical, but I found out that businesses partner with Upside to give you your money back on purchases. You know how coupons work, right? Well, this is better. Think about how an extra $10, $20, $50 a month would help you out. I'm using that extra cash to help out with holiday gifts this year. It's pretty clutch. This is such a no-brainer. Download the free Upside app in the App Store or Google Play and use my code 5 points to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. First claim an offer for whatever you're buying on Upside. Check in at the business, pay as usual, and get paid. It's that simple. You can cash out anytime to your bank account, PayPal, or even an e-gift card if you want. Again, download the free Upside app from the link below and use my promo code 5 points spelled out and get $5 on your first purchase of $10 or more. Part 1. An Industry Shapes a Stadium If Detroit is synonymous with making cars, then Akron, Ohio is the same when it comes to tires. When the Goodyear Tire Company was founded here in 1898, it pretty much put this town on the map. Goodyear still has its headquarters here, and other companies such as Goodrich, Firestone, and Kelly Springfield all operated in Northeast Ohio, with Akron gaining the moniker, the rubber capital of the world. Rubber is a fitting industry for Akron, as over the years it's proven its resilience against hard times. One key to the city's survival has been the University of Akron, which even has a polymer science program. Much like tires, football has also been a longtime staple in Akron as the Zips program was established in 1891 and began play in the Ohio Athletic Conference in 1915. As the program grew, it was clear the team would need a new stadium. In 1939, still in the Depression, the Works Progress Administration authorized a new stadium in southern Akron. And in only a year, the Rubber Bowl was born. Built at a cost of $546,000, which with inflation is easily a billion dollars in today's money, the stadium was easy to build as it sat next to a hillside and its horseshoe shape was simply carved out. This made making the stadium simple, but as we will find out later, would be a tragic mistake. The Rubber Bowl was named after John Q. Rubber Esquire, a local sharecropper. I'm kidding, it was literally named after rubber, you know, the bouncy stuff. The Zips played their first game here in 1940, and soon the venue would find many other uses. Part 2. The Glory Days The Rubber Bowl enjoyed immediate success and lively crowds. However, their primary tenants, the Akron Zips, didn't really play all that great of football. The stadium hosted two NFL games in 1941 and 1942, and for over 20 years was used for preseason games by the Browns. During the 1952 season, the financially troubled Dallas Texans also played a game in the Rubber Bowl, adding to its rich history with the league. Only 2,500 fans showed up. As Akron declined in population during the 60s and 70s, a strong emphasis was put on the Zips football program to provide entertainment for the town. With them joining the D2 Ohio Valley Conference in 1980 and then going up to D1 in 1987 and ultimately joining the Mid-American Conference, aka the Mac in 1992. Still not much success on the football field, but the Rubber Bowl was a constant backdrop for their raucous fans. Just like hair metal, the building peaked in the 80s with the Monsters of Rock tour coming in 1988, featuring bands such as Van Halen, Metallica, and Bon Jovi in what sounds like a paradise for anyone from Ohio who was born before 1975. Other acts such as Tom Petty, Bob Dylan, and the Grateful Dead all played the Rubber Bowl. The 90s and 2000s, however, would not be kind to the stadium. Part 3. The Decline 
As Akron grew its football program, it became incredibly obvious that the Rubber Bowl wasn't quite up to par for a D1 school. And mind you, they play in a conference that has Kent State, Eastern Michigan, and Buffalo's shitty-ass stadiums in it, so you know things were getting pretty bad. As the 90s zoomed by, the Rubber Bowl was now 50 years old, and as the early 2000s came, everyone knew it was time to go. The turf was awful. The concrete, stale, and old. Even worse for the Rubber Bowl, it was not actually located on the Akron campus, and both the travel costs and inconvenience weighed heavily against a renovation. Why invest in a stadium that isn't even close to you? In 2007, it was announced a new stadium would be built, the 30,000-seat InfoCision Stadium, to be owned and operated by the University of Akron. They wanted new, on-campus digs for that sweet, sweet Wednesday night maction. This spelled the end for the Rubber Bowl, and it held its last game here on November 13th, 2008 against Buffalo, a 43-40 overtime loss. After the game, a special ceremony commemorated the 68-year history of the stadium. It might as well have been a funeral, because what would happen to the Rubber Bowl after this truly is a tragedy. Part 4. Abandonment the university had a plan for their new stadium, but didn't think at all about what to do with the Rubber Bowl afterwards. So the place sat empty like a shopping mall from the 90s. Alongside the abandonment of the Rubber Bowl was what was happening to Akron during this time. Long removed from the glory of the 1960s, the town had suffered declining population, erosion of its infrastructure, and terse racial tension. Competition from other states and worldwide in the tire industry combined with the global recession of 2008 hit Akron pretty hard. The Rubber Bowl's emptiness reflected the soul of the town, a bygone era of glory. There was hope for the stadium in 2013 when a marketing company bought the Rubber Bowl for a paltry $38,000 and planned on putting a USFL franchise there, the Akron Fire. A fitting name since the entire acquisition was basically this. The USFL team never happened. In 2014, the company announced they would put a dome over the Rubber Bowl and make it a multi-use entertainment facility. However, that may have been SBF-level bait to attract stupid investors, as not a single improvement the group promised, like upgrading locker rooms and the press box, had been worked on at all. It was announced in 2015 that the Rubber Bowl would host Loudfest, a hip-hop concert, but the stadium was in such bad condition that the concert had to be moved to Cleveland. You know things are bad when you have to move things to Cleveland. Finally, in 2017, the stadium was foreclosed on by Summit County and the deed was forfeited. I mean, these dudes defaulted on a $38,000 loan? And after nine years of complete neglect, the stadium sat empty without a single plan for its future. The Rubber Bowl became a popular place for urban explorers and local kids wanting to drink beer and smoke weed and maybe feel their first tit. Mother Nature went to work on the structure and it became dangerous. The county knew something needed to be done, and unfortunately, the story still doesn't end here. Part 5. What Now? Immediately after the county took possession of the stadium, it was announced it would be torn down. An emergency demolition took place in 2018, with the press box and east and south tiers being raised and removed. However, there is a major problem. The portion of the stadium that is built onto a hillside is actually supporting the adjacent George Washington Boulevard and likely cannot be removed as fears the road may collapse. As of today, no further demolition has happened and much of this bastardized stadium looks sad and incomplete. The awful turf still there, rotting away. The partial grandstand sits empty. The once proud sign, rotting and defaced. In a way, the Rubber Bowl is a reflection of Akron, an unknown transition. Healthcare has replaced the tire industry as Akron's leading employer as its residents begin to age. And whatever may come of this place, just know in its heyday, it wasn't a mistake. The echoes of its past glory can still be heard.